Okay, so today we're going to look at pre-verto, stage one, clutch and flywheel packages. We're going to show you how they're assembled, cleaned up and balanced so they're ready to bolt straight on. So looking at the diaphragm itself, this is a Borg and Beck, what's called a blue diaphragm with a stage one kit. So these cope up to about 70 pounds foot of torque. Yeah, this is one of the older grey covers. You'll see how much thicker and stronger that spring is on the back. Um, it's also got, you'll see, reinforcements in the centre there. The blue one, standard spec, you'll see that it's not kind of reinforced in the same way. AP turbo spec clutch plate, so 180 millimetres solid. There's no springs in here. We'd recommend these on road cars, anything up to what, 90 horsepower, I suppose. We call it a turbo clutch plate just because it would have come with the MG Metro Turbo or the ERA Mini Turbo, but you don't have to use it on the turbo car, of course. Six of these, so you get three short and three long. These are our own steel bolts that come with the kits. Then to go with that, you've got the drive strap spacers, and that basically just takes up the extra width that's machined off of the flywheel compared to the standard one. Finally, I suppose, is the uh, drive strap. So on stage one kit like this one, we have six of these. It's just enough pressure. On the race kits, you go up to nine in total. Can you see that kind of yellowy stuff we put on there uh, just to stop them going rusty? Because they are just bare steel. So you want to get rid of all of this rust inhibitor grease that's on here. Probably a good 10 minutes or so that I'm going to be here cleaning this stuff off, but it pays to be as thorough as possible because like one small speck of this and it's going to contaminate your clutch. This is the EN8 steel back plate. We also do it EN24T, so it's a harder material, harder steel. It means you can take more weight out of it. So if you see on the back of the EN24T, there's little pockets machined into there which um, just makes it that bit lighter. If you're doing it at home, just wear some gloves. Don't do as I do. I've got hard hands. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is if you're wearing, I suppose, latex gloves doing this, it just dissolves them, doesn't it? So I suppose in some ways you're probably better just to not wear gloves, but clean your hands off very quickly afterwards because it dries all the skin out, which is not good. There you go, so you can see that's nicely cleaned off now. That's just about right for assembly. So once you've done that, you've got the flywheel next. It's a bit easier on there, actually. It's obviously not, not caked on quite as thick. The ring gears are attached after the flywheel's machined, so it means we can have a, either a pre-engaged ring gear like this one with the square teeth. These have got 129 teeth. Uh, or we can fit the, the original inertia type which is 107. So we heat them up in the furnace, shrink fit them on here in the workshop, and then they're TIG welded in place. Nicely engraved on the front with MED, which looks really smart. It's got the timing marks on the top, so if you've got a original type transfer housing with a hole in the top, you can actually you can set the ignition timing using that as well if you want to package them together with all the parts you need but it includes this complete service of cleaning it, building it and balancing it. So in my opinion always go for a package like this because it's just so much easier. It is, just drop this flour wheel onto the crankshaft. This is a master crank by the way so this is pre-balanced. Um, we use this to balance you know, individual components dynamically on the end here. It doesn't have to be tightened up, we'll just do it hand and tight really because all we're going to do is fire it up for a, a few seconds. So if you look on the sheet now, it's telling us that it's 1.3 gram, well, 1.13 grams out of balance. So the tolerance which we usually work to is about a gram. So this one is it's not too bad actually. So as you can see the crosshairs on there, as it comes round it lights up the 1.13 and that's at the top part of the component where it needs the metal removing to bring it back down in tolerance. Find that part and then just put a mark on there to reference it and then we know we've got to remove the uh, material from that area. So just take this abrasive band wheel um, to this area here which we marked earlier just to remove the, the material. Which 
sure you give it another quick clean, um, blow off with the airline, um, and then we can drop that back on the on the balancer. And to 0.4 now, so we've taken about half a gram off uh, off the flower wheel. We're obviously, in balance now with this one part of the actual package. Okay, so first job is the backing plate and the clutch plate. We'll take these over. What you'll notice is I've got this little bronze collar which actually sits on the crankshaft just there and replicates the uh, primary gear. And that just keeps the clutch plate central. Back plate on first. If we just drop that onto the collar, we know that's running in the center now. We'll always leave the crank on top dead center as well just because it keeps, if you look on this, this end here, the keyway in the end of the crankshaft is actually offset. The next part is the flywheel, which has obviously been pre-balanced now. We're gonna drop that back on, line the keyway up. This is just a dummy bolt which we use for the balancer, so it's just a short little bolt just to hold the clutch assembly onto the crankshaft. It's time to bolt the drive straps to the flywheel. Uh, what we'll do is just bolt these together with some Loctite. We use the 272 Loctite here. So they need lots, just a little bit on there on the threads. Bolt it up. Just, just do these finger tight for a start. The Loctite. Just nip it up, just so you've got a bit of movement in that drive strap. Okay. You'll notice on here, there's three positions, obviously, where it can fix onto the um, uh, flywheel. There's an A mark in there, which usually denotes top dead center. Spin the flywheel round, top dead center, so number one big end, well, number one or number four, whichever way you're looking at it, is at the top, so we know this area here is top dead center. And another reference is obviously the timing marks here, which Stephen mentioned earlier, are at the top bit tricky to sort of balance it all together at this stage but um, if you just do it up just just nice and loosely spin around it's easier obviously on the balancer because we can rotate the clutch assembly um, as we're bolting it together so if you're doing it at home perhaps lay it on the bench um, but it does need centralizing properly and balancing so we'll show you that part in a moment okay so once you've got it somewhere near um, what you just need to do is just finally nip these bolts up. One, two, and three. Just to put a bit of pressure on the uh, on the clutch spring, because what we're going to do now is, which is quite an important part of balancing the clutch, is to centralise the. Um, the backing plates. You just need to get a reference to start with, so you just pull that round and just pull it round to zero. We know we've got a slight high point there. So each one of them marks you'll see 90, 80, 70, 60, each one of them graduations is ten thou. So one mark is one thou, one thousandths of an inch. So we're we're ten thou lower there for a start than our first point, ten thou. 10 thou ish, 8 or 10 thou lower there, so we know this high point of the back plate needs to go that way by 5 thou ish. You're not just going to be able to do this with your fingers, so you just do need to put a little bit of pressure. If you have a quick look at the, um, the, di the dial indicator now, we need to take that down. Oh, that's too much, you see. Can you see how sensitive that is? So now we've gone too far, we need to go back the other way. Find a zero again so we know where we're, we're starting from. Okay. So that's within now probably two thou, which is, is fine really. So what we can do is tighten the three bolts up now to put the full pressure of the spring on the actual clutch assembly. We'll just quickly nip these three shorter bolts up here. Okay, some, something else which is quite important, which some people don't really pay much attention to, is the actual angle of the spring. Um, I don't know whether you can see it there, um, but once it's compressed, you need to have it, it's not, not quite flat, um, but to a certain angle as it is set up there, um, just to give the, the right pressure. At one point, we've got quite a good one here. Sometimes they can range from one, two, three, I mean, even over five grams sometimes, but 1.2 is quite good, so it's, it's very close to tolerance of a gram, so 
um, we'll stop that and um, we'll remove the metal as we did earlier. We'll remove the metal from the diaphragm because we know this, this is the part which is out of balance now. Um, we need to find the crosshairs and it is literally top just there. So the only real way of removing material from this such diaphragm is um, an abrasive wheel angle grinder um, across this area here. It's the only area where there's material to come away. Um, just got to be careful not to take too much because um, obviously it is a strengthening area of the actual part itself. So remember to put the crankshaft back onto top dead center so this big end on the top so we everything lines up again just got to bolt this um, the, the, the clutch assembly back onto the crankshaft but obviously it's a little bit more fiddly now than earlier because you've got the clutch diaphragm on here so you've got to try and get your fingers in there get the uh, the locking plate lined up and then obviously get the, uh, the bolt in as well okay let's grab the socket Now you see the, uh, the weight's gone green, uh, we're in the green circle which is under a gram, so yeah, intolerance, um, good to go. Alright, so that's all assembled, centralised, balanced, ready to go. Final thing, torque up the bolts. It's a bit overkill, but it's a decent snap on the torque wrench, so just work your way around. The other thing to mention, obviously, when you get this, just pop the clip off as an assembly. No need to take all this apart, and actually we'd advise don't take it apart because it will knock it out of balance again. So just remember that, just to take the clip off and you'll be able to get the, the washer and the flywheel bolt in like that and you can just mount it straight on. Okay, so that's how it's done. Stage one pre-verto setup, complete package, balanced, all ready to go. Thanks very much for watching, hope that was useful and if you fancy more content like this, then subscribe to our channel.